Hi, I'm David Taub, and welcome to the Parsha Rabbit Hole, where I find something weird in the weekly Torah portion and follow it all the way down until it gets even weirder. This week's rabbit hole eventually gets us to weightlifters, watermelons, and ancient carrying frames. But, as always, we have to get there. Before we get started, this week's episode is dedicated by HasidusWiki.com in honor of its own existence. One of the great things that has come out of the rabbit hole, for me at least, is that it's prompted a bunch of people to share their cool projects with me. And Hasidus Wiki is definitely a very cool project. As the name implies, it's a collaborative encyclopedia of concepts in Jewish mysticism, but because Kabbalistic concepts are so hierarchical and interconnected, this format is perfect because it really lets you follow the path from one concept to another. So definitely check that out, HasidusWiki.com. Okay, let's get started. This week's Torah portion, Parsha Shlach, tells us about how Moshe Rabbeinu, or Moses, sent 12 spies, one from each tribe, to scout out the land of Canaan and report back to the rest of the Israelites. And it didn't go well. They came back with tales of giants. They might be giants. Then yeah! everyone got scared, and then everyone got punished, and had to wander in the desert for 40 years. But there's one part of that story that's always been the most exciting part to me. One of the things the spies were supposed to do is bring back some fruit to show how good the land is. But it backfired. The fruit was so exceptional that it scared everyone. In the Parsha it says that the spies cut off a branch with a cluster of grapes and they carried it back on a pole with two. And they also brought back a pomegranate and a fig. Now the normal way to read that is that two people carried this bunch of grapes on a pole. Most commentaries explain it differently, and we'll get to that, but for now, the point is that this bunch of grapes was so big that it needed to be carried on a pole by multiple people. I start his each off with like 20 grapes. <laughs> then I is one at a time. The bum who holds the most grapes wins this gold ball. So I've been obsessed with these grapes for a long time. Those of you who are familiar with some of my older work know that almost 20 years ago, I made a weekly Parsha series with puppets called The Parsha Report. It was so grueling that I decided to never do a weekly Parsha series ever again. Luckily for you, I like making stuff too much, and here we are. But with the Parsha rabbit hole, I've been trying to pick different ideas than the ones that I explored in the Parsha report. But the Parsha report episode for Parsha Shlach was about the grapes. Giant Grape, my first question is, how did you feel when the Jewish spies came in, saw you guys, and said, hey... If the grapes here are this big, then the people must be ginormous. But even though I've explored the grapes before, this time around I want to focus on a specific question that I've always wondered about but have never found an answer to, which is exactly how big were the giant grapes? In that puppet video from 20 years ago, I picked a size based on what I thought would look funniest sitting in a chair. What was that like? Tell us a little bit about that. Mm, fascinating but I wasn't basing it on any actual information. But when I started looking into these grapes for the rabbit hole, I saw that Rashi actually gives us a pretty good starting point. He says that this phrase, might b'shnaim, on a pole with two, doesn't mean what we think it means. Because the only way to carry something heavy on a pole is with two people, so that's obvious. So the Torah wouldn't have to tell us that. So instead, with two must be referring to the poles. They carried it with two poles which based on the two people per poll logic that Rashi already established would imply four people. But then Rashi says that one guy carried the pomegranate, one guy carried a fig, and eight guys carried the grapes. So now we've gone from two guys with one pole to eight guys with two poles. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, how do we get to eight guys? Four guys makes more sense. One guy on each end of the two poles. And we'll clear that up later. Another thing is that it only adds up to 10 and there were 12 spies. And Rashi explains that that's because two of the spies, Yeshua and Kaliv, realized that the bringing back giant fruit plan was all about scaring people and they wouldn't participate. But the main thing that jumps out to me is that this whole grape operation just got a whole lot bigger. Okay, this is going really well. Oh. Then Rashi ends with a method of figuring out the weight of the grapes, but he doesn't actually do the math. He gives us the pieces, which we'll get into soon, but he doesn't get us all the way there. So I dug around, and I couldn't find anybody who does. The idea originally comes from Gemara and Midrash, and they don't do the math there either, and none of the commentaries do. So it seemed to me that if I could follow through with the calculation of the weight of the grapes, I could then figure out the size of the grapes. But as I dug around, I found that, as always, 
There are multiple opinions at every turn that complicate the calculations and give us new ways of looking at the whole grape carrying operation. So that's where this week's rabbit hole starts, with giant grapes and trying to figure out exactly how giant they were. If you're ready to see where that leads, let's dive in. Okay, so as I said, Rashi's method for figuring out the weight of the grapes comes from Gemara. They're talking about a story in Sefer Yeshua, or the book of Joshua. After the Jews cross the Jordan River, Yeshua instructs 12 men, one from each tribe, to each place a large stone in the bed of the river. And those 12 stones would be a monument to the crossing of the river that would stand forever. So that story could be a whole rabbit hole in and of itself. But the thing that's relevant to our grape conversation is that the Gemara tells us that over a thousand years later, two Tanaim, rabbis of the Mishnahic period, actually saw those stones and measured them and said that each stone weighed 40 saw, which is a biblical measurement and we'll get into exactly what that weight is soon. But the Gemara implies from that that this is the maximum weight that a person can carry in any situation. But then the Gemara continues and says that if a person has someone helping them, then they can carry three times as much, which comes out to 120 saw. And then it says, from this, you can calculate the weight of the cluster of grapes. And as I said before, they don't actually do the calculation. Ooh, the but based on the pieces that they did give us, the entire calculation depends on how many people were involved. And then you can multiply. Now, one thing that's important to clarify is what that per person weight is. We said that if people are working together, then the maximum load is 120 saw. You might conclude from this that because they're working together, that weight would be split between the two, 60 each, which is still more than what one person can carry alone. But that's not what Rashi says. He says that if people are helping each other, then each person can carry 120 saw. And I double checked and a bunch of later commentaries use 120 as the multiplier for this. So that's what we're gonna go with. But now we have to figure out how much a saw weighs. The problem is, a saw isn't a measure of weight, it's a measure of volume. So it doesn't convert into pounds, it converts into liters or gallons. One widely accepted opinion for the conversion of saw into modern volume measurements is 8.3 liters. And as we said before, each person carried 120 saw, so 8.3 times 120 is 996 liters. Now, you can figure out weight from volume, but you have to know the volume of what? In our case, the question is, the grapes weighed the same as 996 liters of what? Now you might think, well, grapes. That's 996 liters of grapes, and then you figure out how much that weighs. But the Gemara presents this maximum capacity that a person can carry as a general rule, and then says that you can figure out the grapes from that. So it wouldn't make sense to say that it's grapes everywhere. It has to be 996 liters of something constant so that that weight stays the same for any situation you would apply it to. According to Korban Ha'eda on the Talmud Yerushalmi, which has a similar discussion, he says that when it says that the maximum weight a person can carry on their own is 40 saw, that means the weight of 40 saw of water, which then gets amplified to 120 saw of water when there are multiple people working together. So 120 saw of what? Water. Which is great because in the metric system, one liter of water weighs one kilogram. So that makes the math a lot easier, at least for this part. So based on that opinion that a saw is 8.3 liters, a saw of water would weigh 8.3 kilograms. And 120 saw of water, or 996 liters, would weigh 996 kilograms. Which would mean that when working together, each person could bear almost 2,200 pounds. So before we go ahead and start multiplying that by the number of people and making that huge number even huger, let's just address the fact that that's really heavy. This is a narrative of very heavy duty proportion. Ah! That's uh, over a ton for each person. And even a third of that, which is what the Gemara says a person can lift on their own, is over 700 pounds. Just for reference, the current Olympic record for weightlifting is 267 kilograms or just over 588 pounds. So this is a lot more than that. There was a guy who lifted 5,000 pounds by lifting two cars on a platform, but I don't even know what to do with that information. And remember, this isn't just lifting for a few seconds. They had to carry that multi-ton bunch of grapes back through the desert. The Ben Chai addresses this issue, that this seems like an extraordinary amount of weight for people to carry, and he says that it was a miracle. He also does some gematria stuff with the number 120, but we've already got so much math in this rabbit hole that I'm not going to get into it. 
But the idea is that the spies were originally sent to do something good, to see how great the land was and get people excited about it. And bringing back the giant fruit could have been part of that, so they were granted superhuman strength. They just ended up using that superhuman strength the wrong way, which I think is a cool idea. Anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, let's figure out how big those grapes were. Oh, yes, I am. We have the weight carried per person, 996 kilograms. So we just need to multiply that times the number of people. We already know that Rashi says that it was eight people, but let's start with the plain reading of the verse, which is two people. And there are some commentaries that say that that is what it means. Based on two people carrying it, the total weight of the cluster was 1,992 kilograms. But if we want to know how big each grape was, we have to divide that by the number of grapes in a cluster. Obviously that can vary a lot, but when I googled it, I got an average number of grapes in a cluster of 70 to 100. I like easy math, so I went with 100, which gives us an average weight per grape of 19.9 kilograms, which will round up to 20 kilograms or 44 pounds, because why not round? This math is super loosey-goosey already. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of blame being thrown around loosey-goosey right now. Now here's the next obstacle, getting from weight to size. I tried a few different ways of doing this, and I even made a super complicated spreadsheet to figure it out. First I tried to scale up based on the diameter of a sample grape, but that doesn't work because circles are weird. So then I decided to use the average density of a grape, meaning how much does a grape weigh per cubic centimeter of space it takes up. Obviously this is going to vary a lot, not just from one type of grape to the next, but from one grape to the next. So I found a lot of different values for this, but we're just going to go with one of them for the sake of this little exercise. 0.64 grams per cubic centimeter. From there, I could estimate the volume of a 44 pound grape, which I could then convert to diameter, assuming that this is a perfectly spherical grape. And what I got was a grape that is 1.3 feet tall, or wide, it doesn't matter. This is a spherical theoretical grape. For reference, here's a beach ball of approximately that size. So based on two people carrying the grapes on one pole, this is a very rough estimate of how big each grape was, keeping in mind that we made a lot of assumptions along the way. But according to the Gemara and most commentaries, those grapes were carried by more than two people. The Gemara that we were looking at before continues and says the thing that Rashi quoted about it not meaning two people, but two poles. The Gemara doesn't say anything about eight people though, not yet at least. We'll get to that in a minute, but for now, it looks like four people. So if we do the same math that we did before, we get an 88 pound grape, which is two times heavier. But because as I said before, circles are weird, the diameter increase isn't as dramatic. It's 1.6 feet. I don't have a beach ball for that. But the Midrash gives us another count. It does a similar thing as the Gemara and says that Bamait Bishnaim on a pole with two means that there were two poles. But then it brings another opinion that there were three poles. Because on a pole is one pole and with two is two more poles, which is three poles. So based on that, three poles means six people, which gives us a 132 pound grape with a 1.8 foot diameter. And again, I'm sorry, no beach ball. But now it's time to get to that thing about eight people. I'm the king of eight and I'm here to state that everything here has to total eight. Jumping back to that Gemara, after it tells us about the two poles, it gives us a statement from Rabbi Yitzchak that it wasn't just poles, it was tortane vetortane de tortane, which maybe kind of translates as scales and scales of scales. Tertani is a weird word that doesn't make complete sense to me here. It comes from a Greek word meaning scales, but the way the commentaries explain it is that it's two poles with another two poles going across for support. So some sort of frame. But all the commentaries describe that frame a little bit differently. They all end up with eight things to hold on to, but they do it in different ways. I'm not going to get into the details of all the different configurations, but a lot of those commentaries were nice enough to give us cool little grape diagrams. So here are a few of those. Grapes, 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 singing in the vines. Grapes so big, grapes that shine. Grapes in a cluster, grapes making rhymes. Jumping grapes, grew grape delicious times. 
Okay, so now we finally got to the eight people Rashi was talking about, and if we do all of our math, a cluster of grapes that takes eight people to carry gives us a grape that weighs 176 pounds and has a diameter of two feet. I did order a 24 inch beach ball on Amazon, but it ended up being false advertising because it was a lot smaller. But I'll show you on a tape measure, because I think it's important to visualize it because eight people is the main opinion, the one that most commentaries quote and the one that it says in the Gemara. So it's about, well, there we go, this big, 24 inches. So based on that, it seems like that arbitrary size that I picked for that puppet video 20 years ago was actually pretty close. It's been a pleasure and we really thank you for coming out here. But this still isn't the biggest grape. When I was looking at the commentaries on that Gemara, I saw that Toysvis mentioned an opinion in the Talmud Yerushalmi that gives us even more than eight people. But first, some background. I mentioned earlier that there were 12 spies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The ladybugs came to the ladybugs picnic. This is a famous fact, it's very clear, each one is even listed by name, and there are 12. And according to Rashi, Rabbi Yitzchak's whole frame thing was a logical conclusion based on the total number of people. Two of them had moral objections and didn't participate, one had to carry the pomegranate, and one had to carry the fig, and that leaves us with eight. And that's why Rabbi Yitzchak said that they used a device with eight ends to hold on to. But in the verse where God tells Moses about sending out spies, it says, Ish echad, ish echad lamate. One man, one man per tribe. There's a repetition. Now, two rabbis of the Mishnaic period, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yishmol, had a disagreement about this kind of repetition. Rabbi Shmuel says that the Torah is just talking the way people do, and repetition is a way of emphasizing something. It's a way of emphasizing something. But Rabbi Akiva says that Torah doesn't work that way, that if there's a repetition, then it's there to add something. So the Talmud Yerushalmi says, based on the repetition in that verse, ish echad, ish echad, one man, one man, that according to Rabbi Akiva's position, that would mean that there were actually two people for each tribe, which gives us a total of 24 spies. And then instead of eight people carrying the grapes, there were 16 people carrying the grapes. Commentaries deal with how this would work, given that it's pretty clear from many other verses that there are only 12, but I'm not going to get into that. The thing that's important to us is that twice as many people means the cluster of grapes was twice as heavy. So if we run the numbers, each grape is 351 pounds and has a diameter of 2.6 feet. And yes, I do have a beach ball for this one. This is actually a couple inches smaller in diameter than the calculation that we got for the 16 person grape, but it's a pretty huge grape. I knocked out my lights. Just to give you another point of reference, the world record for the largest watermelon is 350.5 pounds, which is right around the same weight as our 16 person grape. That watermelon had a diameter of just around two feet, which is the same as our eight person grape, but watermelons aren't spheres, they're oblong usually, and this one particularly so. And that measurement was of the shorter diameter. So if our 24 person grape was a little bit more oblong, I think it'd actually be pretty similar in size to that world record setting watermelon. Here we go. Alex Alps. Chris Kent's 350.5. You got it? Yeah. Watermelon, we got five guys carrying this thing. All right, that's it, that's the rabbit hole. As always, if you have any questions or things you wanna share about these grapes, put it in the comments. Thank you for following me down the rabbit hole. If you saw giant rabbit footprints down here, don't worry about it, it's a good thing.